All right, and we are back. This is NHL 20 Franchise Mode Calgary Flames. This is episode number 39. Yes, welcome back to our Franchise Mode here at the Calgary Flames. And welcome back to the uh, 2024 Stanley Cup playoffs as we are set to begin uh, our uh, playoff season here in our fifth year as GM of the Calgary Flames. And uh, uh, we just squeaked into the playoffs. Uh, if you did not watch the last episode, episode number 39, highly recommend you go back and check it out. It was a very, uh, very chaotic episode in a lot of different ways, uh, to say the least. Uh, it started, obviously, with the trade deadline. Uh, went out and got probably one of the biggest pieces imaginable you can get um, at the trade deadline. Um, definitely a very significant player, um, you know, in terms of, of what he's done in his career. Uh, we'll get to that in a second. Uh, but it was more the way the episode ended, which was kind of a, a surprise um, for us. Uh, we did really well. Uh, up until the trade deadline, um, and then we kind of just uh, this last last month or so of the season, uh, we kind of dropped off. So you can see the uh, the tr trade deadline was here on the seventh, uh, right here on the seventh of uh, March, and then we played a handful of games uh, uh, to finish off the season. I think there was about like twenty games or something left uh, after the deadline, um, and yeah, and we didn't go on a, a really good run. Uh, I'm just looking at it here quickly. Um, I mean. Boston, Dallas, we did win against here against Chicago, a loss there against Mini, uh, win there, and then another uh, loss there, loss against Anaheim, a uh, loss against Arizona, so a lot of divisional losses in there as well, um, a loss against Tampa in there, uh, and then yeah, it was just Rocky, I mean, another divisional loss there, another divisional loss there, um, and then yeah, we finished off the season with a, another divisional loss there, uh, but then we won two straight, which uh, these last two games, uh, especially this one against Vancouver, and then uh, this one against St. Louis, is what kind of got us back into the playoffs. But you can see, again, I, I don't know what our record is in this time. I didn't add it up. But uh, you can see in this uh, in this point of, or in this month here, uh, last month of the season, I should say, um, our record wasn't really good. We're probably below 500. Again, I would have to go back and add it up. We're probably just below uh, 500 there uh, when it's all said and done. Um, so yeah, not, not a good end to the season. Um, it's we probably could have finished a lot higher in our standings uh, if it wasn't for that. Now, that being said, you look at where we send the standings, we're only three points out of top spot uh, in, in our division, which Edmonton uh, and San Jose tied for with 100 points exactly. We finished with 97. Um, you know, three more points, and we would have been tied for the first spot in our division. Um, four more points, and four more points, and we would have won a divisional title. So, um, I mean, you know, at the same time, um, you know, it, it was kind of, I don't know, I ended the episode pretty quick in the last episode because I was kind of kind of pissed the way it ended there. Um, I thought we should have did a lot better, but at the end of the day, um, I'm not too disappointed where we finished. Um, 97 points is still good. We still made the playoffs, a top three spot in our division. Um, again, it was, it was another tight year for our division. Um, you know, it looked like there was a lot of separation, but... Um, it really, it really tightened up again at the end of the year. The only difference is, uh, as instead of our division being uh, tight from one through eight like it was last year, uh, where we finished at eighth and we were, I think, we're seven points out of uh, first place. Um, this year, there was three teams here down here that were established at the bottom of our division: uh, Vancouver, Arizona, and LA uh, were established as the bottom feeders in our division. But then it was quite tight. Um, the rest of our division was was very close, uh, and you know, in terms of making the playoffs, you got Vegas, Anaheim, 95-96 us at 97 and like I said San Jose and Edmonton at 100 each so quite tight five points separating one through through five there so it was a very tight division uh, once again um, and again I, I just felt we could have finished a lot higher um, you, again when you look at that month you look at those two divisional losses to uh, to uh, uh, Edmonton and then you know some of those other games that we probably shouldn't have lost I think there was a one or two games in there that were against like the bottom teams in the league and we were losing and it was it was just ridiculous so um anyways i was a little pissed at the end of the last episode the way it ended uh, but again um when it's all said and done we do finish top three in our division just looking here we finished 10th overall in the national hockey league standings that's not bad top 10 out of 31 teams um definitely not bad um you know again we do want to you know we are a contender um a strong stanley cup contender uh, us along with probably tampa bay toronto um are the should be the three contenders uh, this year. Um, so I would have liked maybe a little bit higher, uh, but still top 10, I'll take it. Uh, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go too much into these goals for goals against we were monitoring throughout the season all you need to know is that our goals for uh, throughout the season was not great our goals against uh, was a little bit better but I think it took a hit there uh, let's just take a quick look at where we finished I think it took a hit uh, it definitely took a hit um, in the last month there when uh, Jordan Bington and uh, Jake Allen kind of struggled in this last little stretch uh, we were first and second pretty much all year in goals against we've now slipped down to uh, what is that fifth 
Um, so I mean, not bad. Still fifth. This is fifth best, by the way. Um, uh, so that's that's still not bad. Um, but our our goals against was was tremendous all season. Our goals for now we might just take a look at our goals for as well. Our goals for was not great um, all season. Uh, three one one is our goals for. Uh, it looks like we finished uh, somewhere in the halfway mark. So it definitely improved. Um, actually, you know what? It picked up. Uh, we're in the we're in the top half. Sorry, let's go from. Uh, top to bottom so roughly 11 12 uh yeah roughly 12th in the nhl uh that's actually not bad that's improved significantly um from when we last checked so um again montreal is eight uh nine ten uh eleventh sorry eleventh um so yeah eleventh in the league and goals four so that picked up a lot uh we were most of the year we were dead last if not second or third worst than the ent entire nhl in goals four um, so I'm actually kind of shocked for what I'm seeing right here. Um, I didn't look at it, at the, like I said, at the end of the last video, kind of just ended the last video. Um, I didn't go into our stats. I didn't go into our uh, season breakdown um, because I was kind of pissed the way it ended. But um, it, yeah, I know I'm surprised. Um, so in, in the last month, our goals for must have picked up significantly because even at the deadline, I think we were still about the at least the 15th mark in just in the bottom half. Uh, to be 11th now uh, in the NHL, that's uh, that's pretty good. Um, so our goals four picked up, so that is a good sign. Um, PP was also really bad all year. I think it's still down there. Yeah, it is. Uh, it's still in the bottom 10, uh, 16.9%. Um, it really struggled at the beginning of the year. PK is at 80%. Uh, that's about probably halfway in the in the uh, in the NHL. Uh, that went down as well. I believe we were in the uh, yeah there we are in the probably the halfway mark just in the bottom half uh we were uh, we were in the top five in the pk for most of the year so i'm um, seeing some stats go up some stats go down uh, in terms of team stats um when it's all said and done though like i said we finished with a 44 29 and 9 record uh good enough for third in our division for 97 points to make the stanley cup playoffs and it uh, will be the san jose sharks in this video who we will play uh, in the stanley cup playoffs so uh just before we get into that like i said we didn't get a chance to really look at this at the end of the last video so i just kind of want to dive into our players and then we'll look into san jose and everything uh, but really quickly let's look at our team here um so nathan mckinnon um there's no re there's no no uh i don't know what to say there's no uh, denying what he did all season um, should not be disappointed at all uh, with the MVP of our team. Uh, we went out and got him in free agency last summer, paid him $12.3 million per season, uh, signed him to the biggest contract in franchise history, and rightfully so. Um, he came in, put up 42 goals for us, 100 points. Um, this is exactly what we predicted he would do. So... Again, I'm not going to do this for every player, but I just want to look at uh, Nathan McKinnon in particular. Uh, so actually, this is a career high for him. 100 points. First time in his career he hits the 100-point plateau. Uh, last year, hit 94 with Colorado. Uh, 86, 92, 95, 99. So he actually came one point shy of it there in uh, 19, uh, 2019. Uh, 97. So he was constantly, um, you know, last several years, constantly around the 90s. Uh, you know, there was one year in the high 80s, but mostly somewhere in between 90 and 100. He does hit 100 this year. Uh, that's exactly what, you know, in the summer when we predicted, um, you know, what he would do for our team if we brought him in, we thought that he would be somewhere between 90 and 100 points. Well, he does hit 100 points, uh, actually a career high. Uh, we did predict him to be around 40 goals. Again, you look at his goal category here, uh, right here. 42, uh, 46 the year before, 46, um, 36 that year, but 45, 41. So he's constantly in the 40s, uh, pretty much 39, which is, a, you know, a goal away from 40. So, um, you know, for the most part, he's constantly around 40 goals and 100 points. He's very consistent, and that's exactly what he did for us this year. Uh, had a very slow start um, to his standards. The first half was not good. I didn't even think he would be on track for, um, you know, for even 90 points. I thought we'd have him somewhere around, um, you know, low to mid 80s, um, uh, the way uh, it was at the halfway point of the season, uh, but he definitely picked it up in the second half of the season, uh, as well as the goals. Um, I, did, I thought maybe he would hit 30 goals, uh, but he does crack the 40 goal plateau. So I'm very impressed with Nathan McKinnon in his first season. Um, as a Calgary Flame, uh, no doubt about it. We paid, uh, well, yeah, we paid a, a rich contract to get this guy in free agency. We put, basically put all of our money and our, everything we had on the line for this guy, but he did not disappoint at all. Uh, and again, um, it's it's more what he's going to do in the Stanley Cup playoffs for us here is what I'm excited about. Again, look at his last few years with Colorado. 32 points in 20 games, 27 points in 23 games. Uh, of course, won the Stanley Cup in that year uh, and uh, 17 points in the year before that in 20 games. Um, you know, won a constant smite when they won the Stanley Cup. So, I mean, uh, you know, he's such a good 
uh, performer in the playoffs. I'm excited. If he can do this for our team just like he did in the regular season, uh, then we're in for a real treat with Nathan McKinnon. So definitely not disappointed with our MVP. You know, we made a lot of uh, comparison to him uh, to a guy like Kawhi Leonard with the Toronto Raptors in uh, 2019. Uh, obviously, he has a lot to do before he even gets to that status, um, you know, with in terms of the postseason. Um, but uh, so far, he has, uh, he's living up to that status in the regular season. Um, you know, we brought him in to be our MVP to carry us to a championship. Um, you know, hopefully he can get that uh, last part of that done there. But yeah, not uh, not at all disappointed with the way uh, his season went. Uh, Johnny Gaudreau, um, yeah, you maybe expected a little bit more out of Gaudreau. Um, obviously, he took a bit of a backseat this season to McKinnon uh, as the uh, as the franchise superstar of this team. Um, but you know, still, uh, still probably expected a lot of Gaudreau um, playing with McKinnon and being the guy that's feeding McKinnon the puck. Puts up 51 assists, um, you know, so he does put up quite a few. Uh, just one goal shy of 30. Uh, still hits 80 points in 82 games. That's not bad. Just about a point a game. Again, he's another guy. A lot of our players, um, you know, were really disappointing in the first half. Picked it up in the second half. He's another uh, prime example of that. Um, when we go down the list here really quickly, Elias Lindholm uh, almost hit 70 points playing on that top line with McKinnon and Gaudreau, uh, so shouldn't be uh, surprised there. 20 goals for him, uh, 23 goals there for Sean Monahan, and he hits the 65 plateau, point plateau. Excuse me. Played the entire season behind McKinnon on the second line as the center. So obviously this was the first year, uh, probably in Monahan's career since his uh, first few rookie seasons, that he was not our number one center. Uh, and uh, but still puts up 65 points. That's really good as a second line center. Um, very consistent. Same with Matthew Kachuk. This is what we're going to be expecting out of these two players. Um, you know, for the for the future. Um, you know, somewhere about 60, 65 points, and that's exactly what they put up. Uh, 20 to 30 goals. I mean, look at Kachuk. Still puts up 25 goals quietly on that second line um you know i know i've been a lot I, i've been heavily criticizing kachuk the last few years obviously um you know because i really i uh, believed that he could be a, a superstar a top line superstar but you know what if he's getting it done on the second line with you know somewhere between 20 to 30 goals and 60 points that's all you can ask for uh, i'm not disappointed there here's alex ovechkin uh we what we have to do is go into his uh stats here because we gotta look at what he did in his time with calgary I haven't even looked at it yet uh, and there it is, 14 points in 18 games. Not bad. Uh, does go nine goals, five assists. Um, probably want to see that a little closer to at least a point a game, but still a 14 and 18. Uh, that's not bad at all. Um, shooting at 13.8%, plus nine through that time, which is huge as well. Um, one game winning goal, uh, two power play points. Probably wanted to see that a little bit higher. Averaged 18 minutes with us uh, through those games. Um, yeah, so, I mean, not bad there with Alex Ovechkin. When we brought him in, like I said, if you did not watch the last video, go back and watch episode number uh, 30, 38, I believe it was. Um, obviously, uh, uh, you know, the reason we got him uh, was because of his lethal ability to still produce. Um, you know, he was still, uh, I mean, look at what he did this season. He still put up uh, 31 goals uh, and, uh, what is that, 57 points. So, I mean, he's still, like, if that's what that's what I was saying. Again, if you did not watch the, uh, the last handful of videos, we heavily, heavily went and tried to get Alex Ovechkin in the summer. Um, if we were not going to get Nathan McKinnon, it was going to be Alex Ovechkin. It was him, him or Dylan Larkin, uh, and we. I, I really thought that we should go after um, Alex Ovechkin if we didn't get McKinnon uh, because of this, because he still has the ability to put up 31 goals. He still has the ability to put up close to 60 points. Now, that's a far, far cry from uh, McKinnon's 100 points, so I'm so glad that we uh, we went out and got McKinnon, or we did get McKinnon instead. Um, there's no doubt about it. I would, uh, any day of the week, I'd take McKinnon over Ovechkin at this point uh, because Ovechkin is 38, but... Um, I, I still thought that Ovechkin still had a lot of potential at 38 years of age, and it definitely showed. I mean, he 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 exact he proved exactly that this year. Still hit the 30 goal plateau, still hit the 60, just about the 60 point plateau, and that's actually what I predicted uh, back in the summer. I said, I bet you this guy's not going to get 40, 50 goals. I bet you'll get 30 goals, and I bet you'll get somewhere between uh, 50 to 60 points, and that's exactly what he got. So, I mean, um, you know, and 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 that's a huge huge um, downfall for Ovechkin in terms of his career. Again, you look at his career numbers. That's definitely a downfall for him, but he is 38 years of age. But for any other player, that's still pretty good production. we got to remember that Alex Ovechkin is a very special, special case that um, he was so elite in his career. Um, again, you look at these numbers. Um, he was so elite in his career in the goal category and the point category that, you know, a drop-off for Vechkin is still really good when you compare it to any other player in the league. So uh, he did have a drop-off this year, but again, still uh, considered, you know, at least top top two-line player. He could be on your first line, second line. Um, you know, this guy's just really good. Now, we did go and trade him. 
excuse me, trade for him. Uh, he only has uh, uh, three point. Oh, so we got uh, we got uh, Chicago to eat a lot of his salary. So I think we're only paying him yeah three point two, uh, and if he's only got the one year remaining. So that's what. Uh, another reason we went and made this trade for Ovechkin uh, at the deadline uh, at, in the last episode because uh, we definitely really thought uh, that that was a decent contract and to basically bring him in for the playoffs. I mean, he's just a rental. Um, and we paid a first-round pick for him. Uh, I think that was about it. We paid a first and was it a, oh yeah, a roster player. We played uh, paid Michael Bodker, uh, who is on our third line wasn't doing much this year so uh, I definitely thought that was a fair price to pay for Alex Ovechkin um, still 84 like I said can play on your top line can play on your second line and I think we had him excuse me I think we had him mostly on our second line there's Monahan and Kachuk and, and he put up uh, he put up what was that uh, what did I say 14 points in 18 games uh, yeah so not bad uh, not bad at all. So um, he's going to be huge for us in the Stanley Cup playoffs. Hopefully we can have a long run with Alex Ovechkin and Nathan McKinnon now on our team. Um, you know, you add that to a lot of our other players. Just quickly look here. Hannafin led our, our defense in scoring 56. Max Domi does hit the 50-point plateau and 20 goals again. I was very, very, um, you know, highly criticized of Max Domi this year. Um, you know, and, and really, really disappointed with his production. But he does pick it up in the second half. Um, gets 50 points still, 21, uh, 21 goals, um, you know, still is a minus six. Dylan Dubé, probably still the biggest disappointment this year. Um, you know, really thought he could do more in that third line. Minus 22 is the biggest number here um, that you hate to see. Uh, puts up 30 points. Uh, Anderson, Valimaki, and onward down here. Yeah, so uh, Valimaki as well, maybe you wanted to see a little bit more out of, uh, but that's about it there uh, when it comes to our team. Um, so yeah, just looking there quickly at uh, at our team because we didn't do that the last video. Um, just looking at the goalies here. Again, um, very, very up and down here with our goaltending. Uh, for a second straight year, Jordan Bington kind of, um, you know, disappoints to his standards. Um, you know, he won a Vesna trophy with us two years ago. Um, and I really thought that that was the type of caliber of goalie that he could be. Um, these past two years haven't been his greatest years. Um, so he won the Vezin Trophy in this year with us. Uh, 921 uh, was his save percentage the last couple of years. Uh, his save percentage goes down uh, 911, and now this year 909. So, um, you know, definitely goes down a little bit uh, after that Vezina Trophy year. Still decent numbers. I mean, 270 goals against 279 the year before that. Uh, but still decent numbers. Uh, but I just thought he could be a little bit better. He was very inconsistent this year. It's a good thing we had Jake Allen uh, because obviously for 22 games there, uh, Jake Allen had to come in and uh, and play and play for us. So actually, 29 games is what they have Jake Allen recorded at. Um, and Jake Allen comes in and still provides us over 900 100 as a backup goalie. And the thing about Jake Allen, he's only 81, so that's decent numbers for an 81 overall. Um, Binghamton, who's still 86, um, is obviously still our number one goalie. But it uh, was just very up and down. You know, he had stretches where he, you know, looked good. But he had stretches where he looked really bad. And we had to put Allen in. So, I mean, it's good that we have more of a tandem this year. Um, and we're going to need that going into the playoffs. Um, but I really thought that uh, Binghamton himself could be uh, a, a, a full number one. Um, you know, especially after that uh, that uh, year he won the Vesna Trophy. Uh, but the last two years, he has, he's proved that he's maybe more of a tandem goalie. Which is fine. I um, mean, we can just plan for that going forward uh, as... Uh, as uh, 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 Bingington being a tandem goalie, we can just plan for that uh, moving forward here. So uh, I want to get right into this. I know I'm kind of babbling on here, but I just want to look quickly at you know our team, where we finished. Like I said, I didn't have a chance to do that at the end of the last video, uh, so I wanted to get into that here. Uh, we do have the San Jose Sharks, like I said, so let's just start simming some days here till the Stanley Cup playoffs begin. Uh, all right, there's the NHL season complete. Um, and in order, all right, here's the San Jose Sharks. So this is a look at our first round matchup. Uh, let's look at the playoffs now. Uh, it is Edmonton, Minnesota uh, in the Pacific. The first seed Edmonton Oilers against the uh, wild, call, wild card, excuse me, Minnesota Wild. Second seed uh, San Jose against us, the third seed. Uh, and then in the uh, Central, you got St. Louis and Anaheim who crosses over. Uh, first seed uh, St. Louis. And then you've got the second and third seeds there in the Central in uh, Winnipeg and Colorado. East looks like this. Toronto, Detroit, Montreal, Tampa Bay, uh, Carolina, and Florida, and the Washington Capitals and the New Jersey Devils. So that's how the 2024 Stanley Cup playoffs stack up. Let's quickly take a look now at, of course, the San Jose Sharks. Uh, Could have just did this when we were in there. Let me get a drink here too, my God. All right. Um... Got some ice there. Um, all right, San Jose Sharks, they finished 7th in the NHL. 
Uh, just want to quickly look at where they kind of finish in terms of team stats here, and then we'll look at their player stats. So goals for 3-1-0 goals for, uh, is that better than us? I completely forgot now what we were at. Uh, yeah, so we were at 3-1-1, they were at 3-1-0. Uh, so we finished 10th, they finished 11th. Um, um, yeah, so I mean, not bad. Uh, we're pretty much the same in terms of offensive production uh, as the San Jose Sharks. So it's going to be a very tight series when it comes to that. Um, you know, we're not the highest scoring teams in the league, but we're, we're in the top 10, um, you know, us in San Jose. So we should still expect a high scoring affair. Uh, let's look at goals against per game. Uh, we have uh, probably a better goals against per game because, uh, like I said, we are the fifth best goals against per game. There we go at 287. Where is San Jose? So there's San Jose. Uh, looks like they're still in the top 12 ish, top 15 ish, 299 goals against. Um, so yeah, I mean, they're not too far below us, but we do have a slightly better goals against. Uh, power play, they're operating at 23%. Uh, that is good enough for third in the NHL. So they have a lethal power play. Our power play should be there as well. Uh, again, there's no reason, and we'll look at our lines in a bit here, but there's no reason our power play shouldn't be there. We have lethal, lethal offensive weapons. The fact that our power play um, is not there is, is is a joke. But like I said, it's improved quite a bit. Um, our power play has come up from dead last to a top 10 spot or... Uh, actually, no, our power play is still struggling. Uh, that was our goals for. Uh, power play is still struggling at... Uh, uh, that's BK. Uh, power play still struggling at uh, where the hell are we now? My God. Uh, uh, top ten, yeah, or bottom ten, I should say, sixteen point nine. Sorry. Um, yeah, so sixteen point nine uh, is our power play. Uh, like I said, that was pretty much dead last all year, uh, but it has improved a little bit. Uh, our power play should be up where San Jose is. This is what I'm trying to get to. Uh, PK quickly. Let's look at this. Um, like I said, uh, San Jose. Uh, so they're a top 10-ish team in the PK. Top 15. So they're up there. Um, and of course, we're still about halfway point. So uh, basically, San Jose has a better, better special teams than we do. Um, they're exactly probably where we predicted a team uh, that would finish where they did in the standings would be in terms of uh, special teams. We do have a slightly better uh, goals against. Goals for is about the same. Uh, so they win the special teams battle. We win the uh, goals against. And goals of four is pretty much the same. Uh, goals for, excuse me. Um, so yeah, I just... Uh, uh, with San Jose, I think uh, just by looking at those numbers, I think they're exactly where they should be. Their stats reflect that, whereas our stats, um, some of our stats are kind of misleading because we probably should be a little bit higher, you know, in terms of special teams with the type of team that we have. Uh, but like I said, it is what it is. You can't do anything about it. Um, all right, let's move on here. Looking quickly at their team, uh, Timo Meyer. I was going to say Logan Couture. Timo Meyer. Timu Meyer, excuse me, uh, leads their team with 90 points here uh, in 82 games. Um, so that's not bad. Uh, I guess he is, what? what is he, a right winger? Uh, he is 89 overall. Wow, he's a good player. Uh, so Timu Meyer leads them with 90 points there, almost hits 30 goals. Uh, 44 goals for the captain, Logan Couture, uh, and 44 assists. Good enough for 88 points. Uh, so their top, uh, top, uh, top line is probably that. Uh, with Evander Kane at 69 points. Eric Carlson does hit 75 points. Uh, so still an elite, elite uh, offensive defenseman that they have there in Eric Carlson. Like I said, Evander Kane, 69 points, 28 goals. So they have a pretty elite top line with uh, Timo Meyer, uh, Logan Couture, uh, Evander Kane. I'm guessing that's their top line. Uh, Dickinson coming in there, probably second line center, 51 points. Uh, we got this uh, Blitchfield guy, Blitchfield. Uh, I don't know if I'm saying that right. Uh, he's there at almost 50 points, so he must be young. Uh, 25 years of age. Uh, Michael Grabner, 35 points. So yeah, significantly drops off here. Uh, and then uh, this Cooper Mandy, uh, 33. Uh, Merkley there. Uh, and then yeah, so it drops off quite a bit. They have, uh, so I'm guessing they have, just looking at these numbers here, I'm guessing they have a really good top line, um, some good, uh, a good top offensive defenseman. Uh, and then, you know, Decent, maybe a decent second line that they can put together, but after that, I think it drops off. Uh, we'll take a look at their uh, overalls and their lineups here in a second. Let's just quickly look at their goaltending. Um, all right, Martin Jones leads the way, 69 games. Uh, he goes 9-1-9, uh, so pretty decent season for uh, Martin Jones. Not bad, slightly better than uh, what we got out of Jordan Bington, uh, and they had uh, this backup goalie, uh, Tendick. T Tendick? Tendick? I don't know. David Tendek, uh, he comes in and plays uh, 19 games for them. Um, but yeah, Martin Jones is obviously the guy they're riding. Um, so yeah, probably pretty similar to what we've got in goal, you know, like I said, in uh, in uh, Jordan Bington. Let's quickly look at their lines, and then let's jump right into this series. Uh, my God, all right. 
uh, and then we'll look at our lines here in a sec. But let's have, let's view lines and see what we're uh, we're going up against now that we uh, we looked at their stats. Uh, da, 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 here I want to go by teams. Oh my God, they're way down there. All right. San Jose, so yeah, as expected, their top line is Evander Kane, 85 overall, Logan Couture, 85 overall, Timu Meyer, 89 overall. So that's uh, that's a decent top line. I think our top line's better, uh, way better with uh, Gajol, McKinnon, and Lindholm, uh, but this is still a good top line, 85, 85, 89 across the board. Uh, Yoki Nordstrom uh, comes in there at 79 on their second line, so uh, kind of weird that they got Yoki Nordstrom on there, only put up uh, only put four points in 20 games uh, this year, so maybe he was injured for quite a bit. Um, they got him on the second line right now, Jason Dickinson, uh, 51 points out of Dickinson this year, uh, and uh, this Blitchfield guy uh, coming in. Um, so, yes, yeah, 79, 84, 79. So that's a lot weaker of a second line uh, than I thought. Dickinson, the only guy that's kind of really anchoring the second line. The fact that they got two guys in their 70s, I know they're it's 79, so it's almost 80, but wow, this is a, this is a weak, weak offensive group. Um, so, I mean... They must be getting a lot of offensive production out of this top line and out of uh, some of their defensemen because they do not have a good, they do not have good depth at all. Um, you know, again, uh, the second line's okay because Dickinson's on it, uh, but other than that, it's not that great with those other two. Uh, Grabner and uh, this guy, uh, Chem Slavinsky, uh and Zach Aston Reese. Um, that's not a good third line at all. That's more of a fourth line. And then uh, there's Mar Mar Mardor. Mar Odie, I like I don't know some of these players. My God, Derek Grant, former Flame, uh, we know him, uh, and then uh, there's Noah Gregor guy as well. So uh, they got a lot of new faces, but uh, yeah, this is more of a fourth line. This third line is more of a fourth line. So they basically got two fourth lines in their bottom six. Uh, they don't have a decent second line at all. I mean, like I said, you take Dickinson off here, this would be a fourth line as well. Uh, they have an okay top line. Uh, I'm kind of surprised they are where they are then uh, in terms of offense and even power play for that matter. Um, you know, they must be riding those top guys a lot uh, and getting a lot of production out of them. Uh, Ryan Merkley, uh, what did we say he was producing? Uh, he just has uh, he just has seven points in 50. Well, this is so weird. They have a lot of guys that have not played a lot of. Like, how is your, how's one of your top two defensemen only playing 15 games this season? Uh, I mean, man, they must have had a lot of injuries. Uh, Carlson obviously leads the way, but uh, Merkley is 87 overall. Carlson's 89. That's an elite top pairing. Um, you know, that, that is a good top pairing. Uh, if they can get it done for them. Uh, so they're probably getting a lot of offense out of them. Is Merkley an offensive? Yeah, so they got two offensive defensemen as their top pairing. That's probably where, um, you know, they can get a lot of production as well, especially out of Carlson. Anton Strahlman, uh, what is he? He's more of a two-way defender there with uh, this Jeremy Roy. Um, that's not a good second pairing. That's more of a third pairing, both of them 80 overall. Keith Yandel, 75, and Zach Bogosian, 76. The veteran pairing down there, um, that's more of a third pairing as well. Uh, maybe even an AHL uh, pairing. So, I mean, they don't have good depth. My God, I'm surprised they are where they are. Uh, I'm surprised they finished above us. Like, for fuck's sakes, how the hell did San Jose finish above us with this team? That is just an absolute embarrassment for the Calgary Flames. Um, my God, uh, no offense to San Jose. Watch them completely sweep us in four games after I said that too. Like, unbelievable. Um, so here's their top power play unit. Uh, Meyer, Couture, Kane, Mer Yeah, so I mean, they got all their top players on their top unit. That's probably why their PP did good. But that's what we did with our PP. We put our top guys on there and it did absolutely shit. Look at the second power play unit though. Holy shit. 79, 84, 78, 80, and 75. Like, that is a AHL power play. Uh, with exception of Dickinson, my God, how are they doing good on the power play? Uh, PK uh, looks like that. They probably got a lot of good defensive players down there. And again, a lot of guys in the 70s, though. I mean, they do not have a... I am just shocked. Uh, Martin Jones is an 83. Like He's not even as good as Bainton, who's an 86. So, I mean, I am really shocked that they have this team and that they are finished where they did. Um, I mean, they just must have won games they probably shouldn't have, and they must have... Uh, they must have I don't know. They must have got the right production from the right guys at the right time. I mean, it's just, again, look at our team now. 90, 94, 84. Uh, actually, yeah, we have Ovechkin up there right now. It's uh, Lindholm. We'll start with Ovechkin on the top line because it is the Stanley Cup playoffs, and we know this guy uh, can definitely get it done. McKinnon and Ovechkin, two of them, uh, uh, both of them, so I should say, both won a Stanley Cup. Um, you know, we know these guys can get it in the postseason. So let's put them on that top line with Johnny Gaudreau to start and just throw this uh, match match uh, San Jose's top line with this. I mean, can you imagine we throw this at San Jose uh, on paper? This should demolish and eat up their top line, but again, on paper. Um, so yeah, I mean, we have an lethal, lethal top line there. 86, 91, 86. This is 
pretty much a lethal top line as well. We basically have two top lines there uh, with Kachuk, Monaghan, Lindholm there. Um, and then we have such better depth down here. I mean, 86 Max Domi, 84 Dylan Dubé. Again, on paper, we should be destroying the fuck out of San Jose. But again, um, you know, it's just it's crazy how, you know, you could have such a uh, such a bad team on paper like San Jose is, but yet they do so good. They finish above us in the standings. I know it's only three points, but still, um, I mean, my God. Um, that also probably uh, reflects that, uh, you know, we definitely should have been a lot higher in the standings. Like, we should have finished a lot higher than what we did with this team. Um, 86, 84, 81, Bennett, 79. Yeah, so we'll start with this. Um, I mean, even our fourth line is so much better than theirs. It's funny. I just, I don't know how it works. Uh, we have just as lead of a top pairing as them with Hannafin, Valimaki, Manson, and Anderson, uh, Shillington, and Forsling. Still think our defense is fine. Special teams, like I said, our power play has gone up. Um, we did put Ovechkin in his natural spot there in the top unit. Again, look at our power play. Gaudreau, McKinnon, Lindholm, Ovechkin, Hannafin. Like, that is stacked. Even our second unit. Like, 86, 91, 86 on our second unit. 94 because we're double shifting McKinnon. 89. Like, we have it stacked, stacked all around offense. It should be so much higher. Our power play should be so much higher. Uh, PK's fine. That's all our best defensive players there. We'll start the playoffs with as is. I mean, again, on paper... We should be absolutely destroying this team uh, in terms of uh, San Jose. But again, you know it's just not going to go that way. So um, let's get right into it. Uh, we'll start with what we finished the regular season with. Like I said, I think it's a good idea to keep Ovechkin on the top line um, with Gaudreau and McKinnon and let really McKinnon and Ovechkin, the new guys, lead the way. Um, you know, we have not had uh, a lot of postseason success. We did make it to the uh, Western Conference Finals in our third year. We did make it to the second round, I believe, in our first two years. Uh, but we, we want to obviously win a Stanley Cup uh, and definitely make it a lot further this year. Uh, we really are proving to the entire NHL that this is our year. This is our year to win it. So, um, yeah. Let's jump right in. Without further ado, let's get right into this. I'm kind of excited to see how this will go. Uh, but at the same time, I'm kind of nervous because uh, I just know we're going to find a way to fuck this up against San Jose. Um, again, I'm just, it's baffling that they finished above us. Looking at their team, I mean, they should have been probably a lot lower uh, than us in the standings. I'm kind of even surprised they made the playoffs with that team. But again, um, you know, it is what it is. So let's get right into this. Uh, let me get a drink of water here. And let's start uh, game one of the Stanley Cup playoffs. Round one versus the uh, San Jose Sharks. Let's get right into it. All right. Uh, take a drink there. So here we go. First period. We'll go period by period. Uh, no, let's go real-time sim here. I will go real-time sim. Uh, game one, Stanley Cup playoffs. We're in the first period. Here we go. Power play to start this one off. And we don't do anything. And then they score. Wow. That's going to be the story of this series. Michael Grabner opens the scoring in the playoffs uh, in this series with a one nothing lead here for San Jose. Uh, and then we do respond. Our first goal of the playoffs is, surprisingly, Austin Zarnick. Um, so we'll take it. Uh, a response scenario on the power play by Sean Monahan. So a better way to end this first period uh, by uh, than uh, than uh, than it started, I should say. Uh, second period, here we go. Two one Flames, real time sim. They get a look at the power play here. PK kills it off. That's a good PK. Come on, Calgary. All right, another power play here. We got to be. Oh my God. Okay, so we go one for three so far in the power play. We're gonna try and keep track of the power plays here. One for three. All right, let's go third period. We're still up 2-1, game one. Come on, Flames. San Jose's got a power play. All right, we go two for two on the PK. Come on, Calgary. Come on, come on. We need an insurance marker here. This game's way too close. Here's another power play. Another power play. One for four. Ugh, I'm not liking that. Oh, and then they tie it up. Yikes, Logan Couture tying it up late in the third period. And will this one go to overtime? Yes, it will. So if we go one for four in the power play, a huge reason why, uh, you know, we're, we're the San Jose Sharks force overtime. We have to be better on that power play. We have to be way better. All right, here we go. Overtime in game one, Calgary and San Jose. Come on. PK, PK, PK. All right, we go three for three in the PK. That's what you want to see. Power play. Let's get it done. Let's get it done. Oh, my God. One for five. This is horrible. You can see why our power play is struggling. We might want to even switch it up already. Um, all right, come on. First overtime. There we go. We get the game winner off the stick of Yuso Valimaki. 38th shot on goal for the Calgary Flames. Comes late in the first overtime, but we do take a 1-0 series lead thanks to Yuso uh, Valimaki on the top pairing there. Two-point night for Matthew Kachuk in the Stanley Cup playoffs. Uh, Monaghan gets a goal. McKinnon gets a point here in this one. Valimaki gets the game winner. Uh, Gaudreau is held off the score sheet, as is Alex Ovechkin. 
Uh, and when we look at Bington tonight, pretty decent night, 962. Uh, really held his own in there. Um, yeah, so I mean, one for five on the power play. Uh, I don't like. I, do we want to switch it up a little bit before game two? Uh, I just that's just like with the with the players that we have, we should be a little bit better um, than what we did there. Um, hmm, yeah, let's switch it up here. Let's put uh, Valamaki scored the game winner. Winner, excuse me. Let's put him there, uh, and let's put uh, Monahan had a goal. So let's stack our top unit like this. Uh, we can throw Domi in the middle there in the second unit. Um, so yeah, let's go Gaudreau, McKinnon, Monaghan. I mean, like 90, 94, 91 are three best players overall. Uh, let's put them up there. Ovechkin still very lethal on that uh, pairing down there. Uh, or sorry, in his usual spot on the power play in his wheelhouse. We'll put Yusu up there with uh, with Ovechkin. Just switching it up. We'll throw Noah back onto the uh, onto the second pairing here. Throw uh, Domi into the middle. Uh, so we're just trying to switch players around here so we can uh, uh, boost up those numbers. Because, uh, yeah, one for five. I want to see that a little bit better, especially with the caliber of players that we have. End of the day, like I said, we do take a one nothing series lead. Let's, uh, let's try and get a... Uh, a better game here in game two. Let's see if we can uh, definitely uh, definitely uh, take a 2 nothing series lead heading back to Calgary. That would be huge. So here we go. Uh, Real-time sim, first period. one nothing. There it is. First shot of the game, Johnny Gaudreau. That's what you want to see. All right, they respond right away, though, with a goal from Evander Kane. This game's tied at one. Power play here at Calgary, and there it is, Nathan McKinnon. Uh, so we go two for six uh, in this series, Nathan McKinnon. So the power play looks like it's working so far. Uh, McKinnon's first goal, the Stanley Cup playoffs, by the way. Right, 2-1. Late stages of the first. There's another one for us. Dylan Dubé. That's what you want to see out of your third line center. Alex Ovechkin's got his first of the Stanley Cup playoffs as well. Uh, first for both McKinnon and Ovechkin in a Flames uniform in the Stanley Cup playoffs. Uh, what, that's exactly what you want to see. 4-1 uh, after 20. That's a much better first period for Calgary. Uh, I don't think that Ovechkin goal was a power play, was it? So we're still 2-6. for six. All right, big PK here, big PK. We kill off a five on three. That is huge. Our PK's been perfect so far in the playoffs. There's another goal from Noah Hannafin. Uh, so that's what you want to see. Hannafin and Valimaki each with a goal in this series. And uh, third period here in San Jose. Calgary's up 5-1. And they add a goal here. Blitchfield gets his first of the series. Another five on three for San Jose. And McKinnon gets a shorthanded goal. <laughs> that's Beautiful. Nathan McKinnon, second of the hockey game. Uh, they do get one from their captain here. Logan Couture on the power play. So our, our perfect PK is ruined. Ovechkin adds another one. Uh, his second of the game. They get another goal. And uh, this one is an absolute shootout here in San Jose. What a third period. Back and forth we go. But we do take the 7-4 win. Thanks to a 4-1 uh, start in the first period. The Flames propelled to a 7-4 win. Um, a two-goal night and actually a four-point night for both Ovechkin and McKinnon. Both of them, two goals, two assists. That's what you want to see, plus two, plus three. Um, that's our, like I said, our superstar is leading the way. Johnny Gaudreau on that line as well, going three points, uh, goal, and two assists. What a night for that top line uh, here in the Stanley Cup playoffs. Two-point night there for Noah Hannafin, plus five for Noah Hannafin. Wow, plus four for Yusuf Valimaki. Really good night for our top pairing. Um... Yeah, so not not a bad night there all around. Dylan Dubé contributes. Uh, that's what you want to see. 8-7-1, not the best night for Bennington. Uh, it was definitely a shootout there in San Jose. So we take a 2-0 series lead. Uh, that is that's beautiful. That's what you want to see. Uh, power play looked better. Like I said, I think we went 2 for 6 um, roughly on the PP. Take a quick look at it here. Uh, I believe we were 2 for 6 there. Uh, team stats here. I just want to look to see where we're at here. Yeah, two for six on the PP. So there we are, operating at 33%. That's obviously really good. Top power play right now in the league. Uh, or is our PK still at uh, uh, 11 for one? So power play goals. Yeah, so we've killed off, uh, or sorry, uh, 10. 10 for 11. We've allowed one goal. So yeah, 10 for 11 on the PK. And uh, what did they say? Two for six on the PP. That's much better. Uh, it's looking a lot better through two games uh, already. So let's get into game three here against San Jose. And uh, AHL season is complete. We have not been paying attention to them at all. All right. Um, yeah, so let's get into game uh, game three here. McKinnon leading us with five points through the first two games. Uh, like I said, no surprise there. Or Kawhi Leonard, if you will. Um, all right, let's get into game number three. Uh, from Calgary, we have a 2 nothing series lead. Let's take a stranglehold on this series, and let's see if we can go up three zip in the series. Huge goal or huge game here for Calgary. Home ice advantage back in the saddle in front of the sea red. Come on, Calgary. Halfway through the first period of game three, nothing. 
much quieter first period than the first two games. Only got three shots on goal. That's a little concerning. Come on, Calgary. Boost those numbers up. And they get the first goal of the hockey game. Uh, that's not good. All right. So not a good first period for us at all. Four shots on goal. We can't be doing that. Um, you know, we did so good in game two. What's happening? All right. Come on, Calgary. Pick it up here in the second. Come on. Here we go. Come on, Flames. Got to get something going here. All right. H still has to get a power play here. Come on, PK. Come on, PK. Shit. All right. Our PK is now... Uh, now two for two for twelve, I believe. Uh, sorry, ten for twelve. I'm looking at their PP. Uh, ten for twelve on the PK now. Uh, Eric Carlson, obviously, you knew he was going to show up in this series eventually. That's a huge goal for them. Two nothing, and it's a demanding two nothing lead after forty. Come on, Calgary. This is a time for a huge third period comeback. Let's go, Flames. Come on, big big third period here. Come on, Calgary. I don't want to give them any life in this series. Fuck sakes. Dickinson scores, and it is 3-0 them. Look at our power play. Now goes 2 for 7. They get another goal off the PK momentum, and that's pretty much all she writes. Yeah, so not a, not a good showing here in Game 3 in front of our home sea of red. In the Stanley Cup playoffs, we definitely can be doing much better, and our PP uh, finishes off by going 2 for 8. Yikes. All right. Um, hmm, that's not a good game. Uh, we can't be having those games. Uh, not in the Stanley Cup playoffs. Um, you know, it's very inconsistent after game game two. And then again, look at Hannafin and Valimaki. They were so good in the last game. They were like plus five. Now they're a minus two in this one. Um, all right. So that's not fun. Uh, eight, four, six, not a good night for Bingington. Uh, just not a good night all around. A lot of guys struggling in this one. Uh, obviously we get, uh, we get shut out in this one. Uh, four zip. Oh, all right. Let's hope that one is just a fluke, and let's get up to this next game here. Uh, I think what we will do is make a very minor change at our bottom six. Not going to top our top six. Uh, just wondering, maybe we should take out like a Scott Wilson who hasn't done anything because uh, we still have. Or actually, you know what? We don't have any extra players. That's right. When we got Ovechkin, we had to uh, send down our thirteenth forward. So I was going to switch it up. Can't even do that. All right. Let's just get right into game four and hope that that was a fluke. Uh, we won't even make up line of changes going into game four. So, Because um, we went 0 for 2 on the power play in that game. I was thinking of maybe switching the power play. But no, let's get right into it. Let's get right into game four at the same lineup. It's definitely a risk, but let's hope that we can bounce back. All right. Come on, Calgary. we got to win this one. we got to take that 3-1 series lead. We cannot let them tie this game up going back to San Jose. Come on, Calgary. Or tie this series up. All right. We go 0 for 2 to start this one. We had a 5 on 3 there in the power play. My God, that's what now? Two for ten? Shit, our power play is now starting to look bad again. Um, you know, we are, probably should have maybe switched it around a little bit. Um, hmm, it's just one of those things you got to continue to tweak, I guess, throughout the Stanley Cup playoffs. All right. Second period. Come on, Calgary. Show up. Here we go. Power play, power play, power Oh, my God. Two for 11. This is not fun. All right. Come on, Calgary. Oh, man. This is not good at all. And we can't lose the special teams battle battle because I mean that will be uh, that'll be a huge reason if San Jose comes on top here. All right, it's nothing through 40 minutes. Come on, Calgary, we need the icebreaker here in Game Four. We cannot afford to lose this game. We can't go back to San Jose tied. Come on, Calgary. We had a two nothing series lead in this series. Oh my God, Logan Couture, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me, Calgary? We've gone now almost six full periods without scoring a goal. This is horrible. Come on, Calgary. Where is our fucking offense? Oh my god. Anything, anything late here. Pull the goalie. Get a goal. My fuck. Scott Wilson, who I was going to take out of the lineup, scores with 52 motherfucking seconds left. Are you kidding me? All right. That's huge. That gives us some life. Can we steal this game in overtime? Can we absolutely steal this game in overtime? Come on, Calgary. Please. No, no, no. Come on, Calgary. Come on. Oh, come on. Fuck. They get it. All right. Power play goal of Vander Kane. Um, shit. So yeah, it was not. We don't deserve. We didn't deserve to win that game anyway. Um, that was a horrible, horrible game once again by us. <sighs> Looking at our top players here, nobody getting anything done. I mean, how do you have this lineup and not score a goal in almost six straight periods? All right, we're gonna have to do something here to change up our offense. Uh, Nine four four for Bington. Can't blame him on this one. Our offense just didn't show up for two straight games. And all of a sudden, this series is deadlocked back at two, and it now becomes a best of uh, best of three. Uh, so that's not fun. I just want to quickly look here. 3-2 mini over Edmonton. All right. Um, hmm. 
yeah, so we did so good in the first two games, and then I don't know what the fuck happened here in, in the second game. So let's uh, let's do the switch of Ovechkin and Lindholm. Uh, let's go. Just trying to think here. Wilson did score in the last game. Uh, yeah, we can just try that. Like I said, we can't even bring in another player. We don't have anything to do. Uh, so we'll just try some lineup changes there. Uh, Defensive-wise, I mean, pff, you know, we can't really expect much offense out of our defense other than uh, Hannafin and Valimaki, and they're already on the top pairing. We've got to switch our power play back up again. It, literally, we're just going to continue to tweak this around. So uh, let's now throw uh, Matthew Kachuk up there. Let's try him. Let's now put Noah Hannafin back up there. Uh, I want to still keep Gajol McKinnon and Ovechkin up there. Let's throw Monaghan back in the middle here. Like, fuck, I don't know. Let's uh, let's even throw a fucking McKinnon up there and just try, like, random things here. We're just trying to switch things up, get, get something going here. Because, um, you know, we had a good power play in the first two games. Absolute horrible power play in the last two games. Um, you know, and same with offense, just dropped off. So we have to get the offense going again. We have to get the, the uh, PP going and the offense going again here in game number five. All right, uh, winner of this series will take a uh, stranglehold on the series. 3-1 win, or 3-2 uh, series lead. Let's hope it is us. Come on, Calgary. Have to go back to Calgary with that 3-2 series lead. There's Elias Lindholm, promoted to the top line, opens the scoring this one, followed by Nathan McKinnon. So maybe those lineup changes helping just a little bit. Uh, two goals for that top line. Uh, in the first few minutes of this one, that's what you want to see. 2 nothing. Come on, Calgary. Keep it up, though. Let's keep it going. We need more offense. Oh. All right, here we go. Second period. It's just those first four games really kind of show you how inconsistent our team has been all year. I mean, we, we looked like an elite, you know, cup contender in the first two games. Looked pretty bad in the last two games. I mean, we got to... You know, decide what we're going to be here. Evander Kane cutting our lead to one, which is never fun. Go away, Evander. Come on, Calgary. All right, so it's 2-1 us after 40. Third period, here we go. Come on, Flames, this is a mass. This is a must win right here. Come on, Calgary. Hang on to this one. Please hang on. Let's get some scoring here. Come on. Don't let them tie this one up. Please get some scoring here, Calgary. Come on, anybody score for the Flames. Anybody. Come on, please. Oh, my God. This is getting so tight. 2-1. One. one minute to go. Come on, Calgary. Yes, we just hang on for the 2-1 win. That is so nerve-wracking, just watching those seconds tick down, knowing that, um, you know, you're just trying to hang on, just trying to kill the clock. Um, we'll take it. Uh, again, not the most, you know, best offensive game out of our team, um, but we will take it. Another good night there for Bigington. Uh, so he's been mostly pretty good so far in the playoffs, um, but that's what you want to see. 3-2. All right, so let's go into game six here. And hope it's enough. Let's end this in six against San Jose. Let's end this in Calgary. Come on, Flames. Here we go. All right. I just want to be done with this. Come on, don't let them force a seventh game. We cannot afford to go back to San Jose. Come on, Calgary. Big PK to start this one. Now a power play. Let's respond. Let's respond. This is where you got to respond, Calgary. Come on. You have a big PK. You got to score in the power play right after. My God. All right, there's the juice. Yusuf Valimaki. Second of the series. Huge goal by Valimaki to open the scoring of this one. Come on, Calgary. Hang on to this one. Oh my God, this is so nerve-wracking. All right, second period. Here we go. Come on, Flames. Let's get some more offense. I want our offense to break out. Could really use it right about now. Yes, Gus Forsling on the fourth or third pairing, I should say. Unbelievable. I think that might be his first goal of the season, Gus Forsling. Um, I don't know if he had a goal in the regular season. Uh, that is a massive goal. Come on. We could really use like an Ovechkin one-timer. We could really use like a McKinnon snipe right now. You know, a Johnny Gaudreau setup. Let's go. Come on. Oh, my God. Come on, Calgary. Come on. Let's get it. Get it going here. 2 nothing. Let's hang on here in the third. Let's end this series in six. Come on, Calgary. Halfway through the third. Let's just kill the clock now. Kill the fucking clock. No. Don't give them any momentum here. Come on, Calgary. Come on. Come on. Shit, shit. Yorstrom cuts it to one. Come on. Three minutes. Hang on, Flames. Please hang on. Please hang on. Nine seconds. Boom. There it is. The Calgary Flames defeat the San Jose Sharks in six. Um, all right. Uh, a lot tighter than uh, than I wanted, especially considering on paper. But when you look at the standings, um, you know, probably thought this game would go, or this series would go six or seven. Uh, that's exactly what it does. It goes six. We do come off on the right side of it. Uh, so that's nice to see. Uh, we finish off the uh, San Jose Sharks at six. And now we await a Minnesota and 
Edmonton. So uh, seven points through six games for McKinnon. Still good, but our offense did drop off a little bit in that series. Um, so I do want to see. Uh, we'll, we'll look at it in the next episode in the next series. I think I might put Ovechkin back on that top line. Take a look at here in a second. Um, so let's uh, let's advance a day here. Let's just see who we're going to play. I just kind of want to see who our opponent's going to be. All right, so uh, they're going into seven games in Edmonton and Minnesota. It's either going to be the Wild or, of course, the Battle of Alberta in the Edmonton Oilers. Who will it be? Here we go, game seven. And it looks like it's the Edmonton Oilers. You just knew it would be, right? It's only fitting that we get the Battle of Alberta. So why not? Um, all right, so we will get the Oilers, the top team in our division. Again, only by three points. It looks like it will be Anaheim moving on, uh, beating the top-seeded St. Louis Blues, by the way, uh, in five. They'll play the uh, Colorado Avalanche uh, in the Central. And then it looks like it is Detroit upsetting the Toronto Maple Leafs. Uh, Montreal and Tampa still undecided. Florida will play the Jersey, uh, New Jersey Devils. I can't believe that uh, Toronto and St. Louis lost two of the top teams in the league this year. Unbelievable. All right, let's go one more day here. All right, and finish that Montreal series. Uh, Milos Roman is ready to play in the next game. Uh, we will just continue. That's in the A. All right, so it is Edmonton for us. Oops. Uh, it looks like it is Montreal that did move on in that series, uh, and we'll play Detroit. So uh, there's a look at our uh, our division for the next one. Um, yeah, I mean, what? I mean, obviously we're gonna end this episode here now. Uh, I don't know if how long this one's been going. If it's a shorter one, but uh, we'll just quickly take a look here at our player stats. Um, so I mean, not bad in that opening round. Uh, seven points in six games for McKinnon. Five points in six games for uh, Ovechkin and five points in six games for Johnny Gaudreau. Like I said, these three were expected to lead the way for us. They do just that. Um, three goals is the uh, lead in that category for McKinnon, two for Ovechkin, just one goal for Johnny Gaudreau. Uh, Matthew Phillips surprisingly has a really good series. Look at that, four points for Matthew Phillips on that fourth line. Uh, we might have to promote him to the third line. I think maybe we'll replace Bennett with Phillips uh, to start the series. Valimaki actually had a really good series as well. Uh, three points there. Two huge uh, game winners, I believe he had. Elias Lindholm, three points. Hannafin. So you kind of want to see a little bit more of these guys down here. Monaghan, you want to see a lot more of. Just two points and a minus two. Uh, so Monaghan had a good start to the series. Struggled a little bit. Um, yeah, Kachuk struggled as well. Minus two and just two, two assists. Um, so yeah, we have to kind of get Kachuk and Monaghan going. Um, and then, yeah, uh, Dylan Dubé, not good at all. He had one goal, but then a minus three. Uh, Domi had a really bad series, just one point and minus two. So, yeah, we got some things to fix up here uh, in terms of our lineup. Anderson and uh, Shillington go minus three, minus two. So uh, we'll take a look at some of those uh, some of those depth players, see if maybe we can switch some things up going into the uh, next round against Edmonton. Uh, I'm expecting Edmonton to be a more lethal team than what we just saw in the... Uh, in the uh, San Jose Sharks, um, I mean, you think about McDavid, Drysaddle, and the rest of the players that they have. I mean, I'm expecting they will be a lot more of a challenge than what we had in San Jose. And even San Jose was a bit of a challenge there, um, you know, going six. Uh, I just want to quickly look here at uh, rough numbers here. Goals four. Uh, we go two, five, goals four. Uh, that's good enough for top ten in the playoffs. I uh, want to be a little bit higher than that. Edmonton is at 3.29 goals for, uh, so they're up there. Goals against. Um, our goals against was, what is that, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, top 6. So that's good goals against. Edmonton's goals against is down there. Uh, so maybe we can take advantage of that. Power play, uh, it looks like they had one of the worst power plays operating at just 5%. Our power play uh, was a lot better in the first two games, but man, did it drop off. After that, 14%. Uh, we did have a power play at one point operating at 33%. Um, so, I mean, it drops quite a bit down to 14%. See if we can get that going again here. Uh, and PK really good at 86%. Um, not They had the best PK Edmonton did at 95 uh, but I thought our PK was better. Uh, 86 I guess that's okay uh, in terms of the other teams. Uh, but, yeah. We'll look at all that in the next video. So, yeah, let's end this one here. Uh, we do beat the San Jose Sharks in six. Um, like I said, uh, it is what it is. Uh, we will get the Edmonton Oilers in the next video and in round two. And like I said, it's just about winning a Stanley Cup at this point. I mean, taking out the teams in front of us and, and really proving that we are cup contenders. Because both the Toronto Maple Leafs and the Tampa Bay Lightning, who are the other two cup contenders with us this year, uh, were pegged to be at the beginning of the season. Like I said, uh, we were all pegged to be championship caliber teams, uh, which means we were the three cup contending teams favorites if you had to pick three teams out of the entire NHL and look at where Tampa and Toronto 
excuse me, are now. They are on the outside looking in uh, of the Stanley Cup playoffs they, as they both exit in the first round. We do move on, uh, but it's going to be a challenging task against Edmonton in the 40th episode of our Franchise Mode.